Why are some scientists suddenly so interested in the human mind? A few even claim that the mind may be the true reality and that matter is just a deceptive illusion. What is it about mental activity that causes smart people to offer wild speculations? Part of the reason are the weird implications of quantum mechanics, the theory that has changed forever our sense of reality by injecting uncertainty and bizarre imagery into the very microstructure of the universe. Next, on Closer to Truth, Strange Physics of the Mind. Welcome to Closer to Truth. I'm Robert Kuhn. Can pure physics explain the mind? Can the behavior of atoms determine the behavior of people? For this edition of Closer to Truth, we've assembled an impressive group of physics-friendly guests to guide us through some remarkable territory. Dr. Fred Allen Wolf is a theoretical physicist and author of Taking the Quantum Leap. Dr. James Treffel is a professor of physics and the author of popular books on science. Dr. Gregory Benford is a professor of physics and a well-known science fiction writer. Dr. John Searle is a leading philosopher of mind at Berkeley and author of numerous books about the mind. And Dr. David Chalmers is a philosopher who is helping to develop the new field of consciousness studies. Fred, your books have all discussed quantum mechanics and the relationship to the universe, like the parallel universes. Do you really believe that mind is more fundamental than matter, or are you just having fun with us? <laughs> Maybe a little bit of both. Uh, I'm very much interested in being a kind of a gadfly to stir up the materialists so that they begin to rethink the problem once mm -hmm. again. But I do think mind plays a far more important ingredient in the way the universe is constructed than has previously been thought by any mechanical model. Jim, uh, as a physicist, uh, you've written books such as Science Matters, Achieving Scientific Literacy. Mm -hmm. Do you think what Fred says is very literate? Uh, well, it's, it's very articulate, of course. Fred's a very articulate guy. I think a lot of physicists get uncomfortable, though, when people take uh, physical theories like quantum mechanics and then uh, draw conclusions from them that maybe don't quite uh, uh, support the uh, aren't supported by the theory itself. And I think most people would say that the idea of uh, uh, the observers being part of the universe and events uh, having this wider context probably aren't really supported by our views of quantum mechanics. Greg, as a physicist and as a science fiction writer, your latest novel, Cosm, describes an accidental visit to another universe where time literally flies. How seriously should we take your fiction as a description of reality? Huh. Well, I, I would hope you'd take it somewhat seriously because you write novels in order to make points. But uh, I always try, and I think every scientist should try, to convey both the attitude that science has toward what constitutes proof and also the style in which we arrive at these conclusions because uh, there are cultural mixes in all this. There's a culture of science, and we should always keep it in mind. John, as the renowned author of numerous books on the mind, such as your recent Brains, Minds, and Society, are you pleased or dismayed to see modern physics re-mystifying the mind? I don't think they have, anybody has succeeded in re-mystifying the mind. Uh, I think uh, physicists are as capable of talking nonsense as much as anybody else. <laughs> and more nonsense today is talked about quantum mechanics than almost any other subject, maybe computers. More nonsense talked about computers. But I'm not dismayed, no. Dave, uh, reviewers of your book, The Conscious Mind, claim that you see consciousness almost everywhere you look in the universe. Do you take that as a criticism or compliment? Well, I don't know about pansarchism, but I'm at least uh, open to the idea, at least, uh, you know, after a few drinks, late at night. <laughs> we don't understand the mind. Pansarchism being that consciousness is everywhere. The mind is everywhere. Here's two things. We don't understand the mind. We don't understand the place of the mind in physical reality. 
problem too. We don't understand the intrinsic nature of physical reality. And it can at least seem to be an attractive option some of the time to try and solve those two problems at once. Maybe there's mind right at the very basis of physical reality. I don't know if that's the case. So you could possibly see mind as more causative of physical reality than physical reality causing mind. Mind might well underlie physical reality. Yeah. The we already know from physics and from the mind, the mind is a weird place. The world is a weird place. Who knows about the, ro the role of mind? Fred, you have focused on dreams. You have one book, The Dreaming Universe, as an important insight into seeing reality. Uh, many people might see dreams as a, uh, an incidental part of life, not really related to anything. Uh, tell us about your theory of dreams. The basic idea is that in a dreaming brain, there are superpositions, that is, overlapping aspects of our world picture coming together and forming new pictures or new visions. Uh, this sort of reminds me, or is a metaphor for, what happens in quantum physics when we look at overlapping possibilities forming new possibilities. This is, this is how the universe seems to be constructed based on a quantum mechanical model. So it seems to me that this would be a natural place to look at where the mind and quantum mechanics affects physical world in terms of how we make pictures of that physical world. So the model basically is one which looks at uh, the different kinds of pictures, what, what, might, what might be called archetypal pictures, which form in the deepest level even before we become aware of them. Archetypal meaning some deep Fundamental, structural, structural universal unity of, of, uh, of thought. Yes, there, 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 are, there are universal archetypes that seem to be present according to uh, certain models of psychology. For example, Jung is the, the main proponent of this point of view. Um, and uh, that these archetypes are formed in sleep, in during deep sleep, during this form of uh, uh, sleep we call dreaming. Um, and there seem to be clear indications that we dream in order to form structure of the world. Jim, do you think Fred's dreaming here? Well, I, I, I have problems with this, uh, with, with the metaphor myself. The, uh, I, the theory of dreams, that's as it may be. We don't know much about dreams or why they, they function. But the idea of two things coming together to form a third thing, yes, that's part of quantum mechanics. It's also part of waves in your bathtub. Now, you don't say the universe is a bathtub. And what bothers me about this, I, I, know, I know Fred is very much aware of these distinctions, but when this gets out there, I suddenly have students coming back to me telling me that quantum mechanics says the world has to be a certain way. If this were 10 years ago, they'd say quantum mechanics proves that uh, we shouldn't live in a patriarchal society. I've heard that <laughs> argument. So I, 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 I think I agree with John also that you get a lot of nonsense talked here. Uh, does quantum mechanics generate self-awareness? Is, is that the mechanism? Is what's happening at the most microstructure of the universe the causative factor of what creates consciousness and self-awareness? There is a new model in quantum physics that's just been coming to people's attention, which indicates there might be a way to generate self-reference from a, from a quantum system. The system has to not only observe something outside of itself, it has to observe itself observing outside of itself, and that forms a quantum state in a certain uh, what's called the parallel worlds or the many uh, world's hypothesis of quantum physics. It's a very interesting idea because it allows one to feed back in a linear way which people never thought was possible. Well, one thing that is occurring today is that there are many mainstream physicists, if there is such an animal as a mainstream physicist, who do contemplate parallel universes uh, strictly in a physical sense. Well, uh, yeah, let me say something about quantum mechanics is the science that deals with what goes on at the level of the atom and inside of it. And uh, when you look at quantum mechanics, as David said, it's weird. I mean, it's just weird. It doesn't co correspond with our intuition. But our intuition is based on the Newtonian world we live in. And the idea that when you go to the world of the atom, that it somehow it should be the same as the world we're used to is, a, is, is, weird, is, is weird in itself. It, it doesn't have to be any more than when you go to another country, they have to speak English. Uh, so so when, the fact that when we get here, we find, when we get inside the atom, we find that it doesn't look like what we're used to.